Hi everyone, welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to show you a time lapse of a portrait painting with a background situated in Florence, Italy. I'm also going to give you some tips on recording your own painting. This is one of the five paintings of my Awakening series. They're all measured 9 by 12 inches. I was recalling memories from all the places I traveled to and I wanted to assimilate some of my favorite cities into the series. This was one of my first few time-lapse videos and the recording took a few tries to finally get the hang of it all. I tried to paint on my sketching desk which I could tilt at an angle and tie my camera on my lamp. My neck started to hurt though after a while from looking downwards so I switched to the easel and tied my camera to the easel instead with a selfie stick. And because I didn't check the angle that I was recording at, I had to crop and readjust the focal point to the center of the frame afterwards on my computer. I was also recording aimlessly and had hours of extra footage to go through and it took up a lot of time to just transfer files, label them, and sorting through them. To sum it up, a lot of this journey included a lot of readjusting the setup of my workspace and sorting unwanted footage. So I put together a short list of the things I learned from this recording that would save me time in the future. I think this is not only applicable to painting, but any videos where you're creating something with your hands and it takes up physical space. Number one, keep the subject in the center of the frame regardless of zoom and check it after recording a few shots. This will save time on cropping later on. If the subject is always in the center in multiple clips, you can just apply the same crop setting to all the clips and you won't have to drag and readjust the placement of the crop individually. Number two, maintain one direction, like starting from the top left to the bottom right instead of jumping all over. You don't have to paint in one direction, but the video should show each layer going in that one direction. Number three, have good lighting. Natural sunlight is good, and I highly recommend a fluorescent white floor lamp so you can paint anywhere, any time of the day. Number four, make sure there's no glare in the painting. Even though the lighting is good for your own eyes, it might have a huge glare in the camera, so always hit replay and check before you paint the most crucial parts of the painting. Number five, plan ahead and think of what you're recording in each clip. Even the shortest clips need a particular action or event. It's like a sentence structure, where every sentence needs a subject and a predicate. For example, for the next three minutes, I'm going to make a mental note that I'm adding the light parts of her iris and her sclera, and then blending it into the darker areas around it. After you finished doing this, you would stop recording. It's as simple as that. If you keep these mental notes, you will prevent yourself from recording aimlessly and have hours of unwanted footage. Florence is one of my favorite cities in the world. I love the artistic and architectural heritage behind every monument in this Italian city. It's pretty well known that Florence is the birthplace of the Renaissance with its famous museums and landmarks like the Uffizi Gallery and the Palazzo Michelangelo. There's a certain splendor to a beauty of a city that has been preserved for more than a thousand years, especially when its architecture is more beautiful and grand than a lot of modern day buildings, and yet they use not even a fraction of our technology today. 
this is a place that you can truly fall in love with. In my opinion, Florence is an example of the perfect city. It was built with a lot of shops where the front is the retail space and the back is where all the painters and artisans would brainstorm, explore different ideas, and create. Everyone studied a number of disciplines and not limit themselves to an occupation such as a sculptor or a painter. Da Vinci himself would explore the human body as much as he would explore machinery, buildings, and incorporate the theories he learned about science into his paintings. This is a city that not only appreciates science but also art, and they were equally interdependent on each other and neither would exist without the other. I think that's how mankind should move forward, where people embrace the freedom of integrating knowledge and ideas across different disciplines. It reminds us to not forget the crucial role of art in our everyday lives. I enjoyed this painting very much and I hope you found it helpful. You can find out more about my creative process on Instagram at MandyKeyArt and my art shop at MandyKeyArt.com. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you all have a beautiful and inspiring day.